Hello, hello everyone. So today I am playing around trying to get a new recipe and as you can see I'm making some seitan and I'm going to tell you exactly what I put in it, especially if it comes out great. Now, uh, right now I have uh, a mixture that I put together and don't mind the background noise, my daughter's wrapping Christmas gift. So for this recipe I'm going to make my meat first and then we're going to make some nice buns and uh, we're going to make sandwiches. Okay, here we go. Okay, so uh, let me just put my food processor here to show you. Here we go. I always use a food processor. It helps break down the gluten and give me the strands I want. I'm just going to put a drizzle, more oil. I did put about a tablespoon tablespoon and a half of flour but the rest was vital wheat gluten and we're going to mix it till this forms a ball and it pretty much attaches itself to the center of my food processor. Now uh, when you're using a food processor you do not want to just let it go because when you're mixing vital wheat gluten in there it really takes a beating. So if you have an expensive um, food processor keep an eye on it stop it start it stop it start it so this way you don't destroy your food processor so here we go I'm gonna put it back on okay now I made a mixture that I added to my uh, vital wheat gluten and the mixture was I'm gonna show you the size of the sweet potato pretty much fits my hand I used half a roasted sweet potato and the roasting part. Now when you roast this, you want to put this, um, if you have a cast iron, it's even better. But you want to put this potato uh, face down onto your cast iron and just with a little drizzle of olive oil on your cast iron pan. And what you do is you want to roast it till it's cooked. And you're going to see these dark uh, markings. That's going to give it a nice flavor to your seitan meat. Mm -hmm. But this is a size potato you want. Uh, now I'm going to be using this to make my bread. So when I measure my potato for my bread, you're going to know exactly how much it is inside your vital wheat gluten. Uh, again, to this I did add some olive oil. I used about maybe three to four tablespoons. I put some salt. I put a half a teaspoon uh, to a teaspoon of uh, instant coffee. And I used a half inch ring. My beet was about this size, uh, the size of an orange, I guess. And I used about a half inch ring of raw beet. So, and even if it doesn't stay red on you, as long as you get the flavor that you want. Beets has like an iron flavor. And meat, when you eat meat, it has an iron flavor to it. So that is what you're trying to get to. So you want it to taste good. You don't want it to taste like meat, but you want to have that um, irony flavor that meat has. And uh, remember, I wasn't vegan before. It's going to be 12 years that I'm vegan, but before that I used to eat meat. And yes, I did enjoy eating meat. I didn't stop eating meat because I didn't like the taste of meat. I stopped eating meat for my daughter and for the planet and for the animals, especially today, it's for the animals. So it's not that we don't like the taste of meat. And if you're going to come on my channel and tell me, well, why are you making food that tastes like, uh, if you're vegan, why are you making food that tastes like meat? Well, because some people like the taste of it. And if I can make them something that tastes great and make you healthy uh, and not hurt an animal, that's my mission. So there you go. So back to the recipe. I will mark it for you guys exactly what I did to it and vital wheat gluten. I did one and a half cups so far but I might put a little more just to let you know and then I'm going to show you the texture of the meat what you want to get to it. Plus I did put um, not in here in my vital wheat gluten I put some agar some mushroom powder and that was it. But I did use one and a half so far and a teaspoon, uh, sorry, a tablespoon, a tablespoon and a half of the um, plain flour. And that kind of helps make it a little more dense. So here's my beet, the size of my beet, it's like the size of an orange. And I used just about a half inch wedge. And that's what I used to blend in my blender with the potatoes. Okay, but I will mark it for you. 
under the description hopefully it should be there for you okay so uh, I'm gonna keep mixing this and then if I use more flour I'll let you know okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna split this in half and I think this is gonna be good enough I will need because I don't want a very tough meat I want a tender meat and what I'm doing is I'm gonna split this in half because I am gonna do half at a time I don't want to put the whole thing in my machine in case I break it I don't want to break my machine there we go and now I am gonna process half at a time and then I'm gonna make two bundles when I cook it in my uh, pressure cooker and when, when you're putting this back into the uh, food processor you want to break them up so this way it's easier for it to otherwise you're just gonna have one ball stuck to the side and what you're trying to do is get those strands you see these strands that's what you're trying to achieve because when you pull your meat you're gonna pull it from the strands so here's my paper this is washed paper by the way uh, you can actually save your paper wash it again and you can uh, reuse it believe it or not so here is my first bundle, and that's going to go into my uh, pressure cooker. And now I'm going to make my sec second bundle, and I'm going to wrap that up too. And you know, so many people say, I didn't get my strands. Well, the strands will come, guys. I know it's hard in the beginning because you really have to master your Satan. You have to know exactly when, um, when the... You need to know exactly when it's the right texture, and that's when you're going to start getting the best seitan ever. I remember when I started to make seitan, I was like, oh dear God, I'm never going to learn this. But you do end up learning. So it's a matter of practice. And you know what? If it doesn't pull, there's other things you could do with it. It's not the end of the world. I love reusing my paper. And you know what? This paper you can wash it over and over again. There we go. Unfortunately, I don't have any aluminum paper ready for me. So I have to use some new paper. But I also try not to break my paper and use that as long as I can use it. Actually, I might have had some in my... I might have had some inside my... Yeah, in my oven. Okay, so here we go. We have our two bundles, and this is going to go into my pressure cooker. I just want to wipe this down so I don't make a mess. And then we're going to start making our bread. I made, the other day I made the uh, pizza with white, uh, not white, it was yellow potatoes. And today, because I had leftover uh, sweet potatoes, I decided, you know, why not incorporate it, incorporate it in uh, my meat rather than using uh, rice or beans. I'm using the sweet potato. I'm sure it's going to give it a whole different taste and I'm sure it's going to be delicious because why not? Food is food. When it tastes good, everything is good. And... I'm using the other half to make some delicious buns that we're going to be able to put some meat and some lettuce and some sprouts and some fresh tomatoes and it's going to be super super delicious. So I'm going to wipe this down and then we're going to start with our bread. Now I wanted to make a panettone for you guys but I don't think I'm going to make it for Christmas unfortunately. Yeah, too many things came up that I didn't foresee. So, some of the recipes I wanted to show you just didn't cut it. Okay, so I'm going to get my pressure cooker. Okay, so you do need water at the bottom. And then you need your rack. And your seitan is going to sit right on top. There we go.
Perfect. I'm going to put a sign up this way. Okay, because you don't want water going into your meat. You just want to be able to steam it. So this is going to go in for two hours. So I'm going to put it in for my first 30 minutes. Uh, sorry, 60 minutes. And then when the machine stops, I'm going to do it for another hour. And I'll show you what the meat looks like once it's done. But for now, we're going to put this to pressure cook. And then we're going to start our bread. Okay, so let's measure this potato. We're going to first blend because it's going to be easier. Uh, if you don't blend it, it's going to be a little more um, chunky. You want to be able to either mash it, but you know why? Why not blend it? Because sweet potatoes tend to have um, a little bit of uh, stringy fibers, right? So if we put it through the blender, I'm using my neutral bullet. It's just going to make my life easier. And to this, we're going to add one cup of warm water. Very warm. Because my potato was cold. Okay, so we only need one cup of potato. So hopefully this should be about a cup of potato. A cup or less. So I would say... Yeah, it's less than a cup. I would say it's about three quarter cups of potato. That's what, I, what it comes to. That half a potato is about three quarter cups of potato. And I'm using a sweet potato. Now, if you don't have sweet potato, you could always uh, make your bread again with uh, just regular yellow potatoes or white potatoes if you want. And here I've got one cup of very hot water from the sink because my potato was in the uh, refrigerator so it's a little cold Arthur, can you put those bowls away from me okay so we're just going to blend this up heavy okay so we're gonna add um, our mixture right into there you go right into the bowl my mixing bowl And to that, we're going to add a package of active yeast. There we go. One package of active yeast. Okay. And we're going to start off with adding only one cup of flour and we're going to mix this to incorporate everything and then we're going to keep adding flour. Okay, so we're going to add one cup of, um, I'm using unbleached organic flour. Now you can use, uh, you can use any kind, you can use any kind of flour you wish. You can use whole wheat if you want. You can use uh, you can use whole wheat. You can use spelt. You can use unbleached if you like bleach. You can use bleach if you want. But we're just going to mix this together. I will add some olive oil. I'd say about two, three tablespoons. And then we're going to remove it and we're going to use our hook rather than the paddle. And we're going to add more flour. We still can add a little extra flour. Actually, I'm going to put just a little bit of vital wheat gluten. I'd say about maybe 
a heaping tablespoon of it. There we go. Okay, we're going to add my second cup. Okay, we're going to put the hook and we're going to put an extra cup of flour. Last time I said, note to self, do not wear black when you're making bread or pizza. And guess what I'm wearing? Black. So I have flour all over me. Okay, at this point, if I want to add some salt, I can. I prefer adding um, maple when I'm making bread and um, and pizza, but I'm not going to add the maple because my sweet potato is sweet. So I'm just going to add a little bit of salt, and I'm only adding now because my yeast is already in there and mixed. Oh, I forgot one thing. I'm going to chop up some cilantro, I should have had that ready, and then I'm going to incorporate it into my bread. Now if you want, you can use dry, I'm using fresh, because I love it when you get that nice little punchy taste in your mouth. Okay, ready? Lock it in. Let's mix this up. Actually, proof it right in here instead of doing a new bowl. Duh. Okay, let me just pull this off. Okay, and bread is really, really easy to make. Now, a lot of people are saying, you know what, I don't have a stand mixer, I can't make bread, it's hard for me to knead it. Well, I'm going to show you next time how you can make bread without even having to go through all that. Bread, pizzas. Really isn't hard to do. And once you've had this stuff, you really can't go back to the other stuff. Okay, so we're just going to put a little bit of oil, which I have to fill up here. My dough. Beautiful. You want your dough nice and sticky. We're going to put a little bit of olive oil right in my mixer so it doesn't stick go. and then we're going to put this inside perfect so this is going to go into my oven since i'm lucky enough to have a proofer there if not uh, what you can do is uh, pre uh, turn your oven on on a 275 and just wait till when you put your hand in the oven it feels nice and warm but not that you feel like you're cooking something it has to feel like I say a warm or a hot summer day then you know you can put your bread to proof so then you're going to shut off the oven 
and you're going to put uh, your dough in there and it's going to prove nice and easy for you. You won't cook it, otherwise you will. And if you find it's still too hot in there, then wait a few minutes, wait till it cools off a bit, and then put your uh, your dough into the uh, into the oven. But make sure your oven is turned off. Okay, I'm going to just cover it lightly with something, and then I'll show you what the bread looks like when we're ready to make our buns. Like I said, that's another great way to utilize some of your uh, leftovers. In this case, it was a sweet potato. So we put some in our seitan meat and we made some bread. So we're going to check our bread. We have it rising. You want it to go at least halfway, uh, double its size. And look how beautiful this is more than double its size. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to punch it down because we want to shape it up. But first we're going to put some seeds. We're going to make this one with cilantro and some black seeds. Now these are called nigella seeds. You don't need a lot. You just need a little that we're going to incorporate into the dough. And we're going to slowly bring that dough in. I just want to show you how beautiful that dough is. And slowly we're going to bring it in and pick up some of those seeds. Like I said, you don't have to use a lot of it because they are very flavorful. There we go. Now when you're making bread, you really can add whatever you desire to your bread. It doesn't have to be nigella seeds. It could be flax seeds. It could be any type of seed you want. So I'm just going to pick up whatever seed I have and see how see how delicate that dough is. Okay, I'm going to put this aside and we're going to sprinkle some flour and just roll our dough onto it. Okay, and now we're going to cut this to some size, some shape that we, we desire. If you want, you can make uh, long paninis, you can make uh, some marine. It's really up to you. We're going to make them nice and long, so we're going to leave it flat like this. And we're going to let this rise again. So we're going to cut this bread. same size but who cares right that's what makes bread look great is that it has its own character and now we're just going to flour the top I'm going to flour the bottom of my paper I'm using wax paper, but you can use parchment, better parchment, but since I already had this paper on my tray, that's what I'm going to use. So you just want to flour it so the bread doesn't stick to it. There we go. You could also use, if you have, a cornmeal. And there's our bread. You can make it that it's point here at the end. Just give it a little pinch on the end so it has a shape of a loaf or a bun. Let me wipe this off. 
Okay, just to show you, there it is. Now we're going to put this back in to proof. And we're going to proof it for, I'd say, till it's double again. And don't worry about the flour. I call that dirty, dirty bread. Uh, basically, when there's a lot of flour in your bread, but that's okay. You can just shake that off. Uh, and we're just going to make, with scissors, tiny slits. If you have a very sharp knife, you can do it also with a knife. And we're going to put it back in our warm oven. And remember, bread doesn't have to be perfect. But what it has to be is delicious. So back into the oven until it's double. And if your bread does stick to the side, that doesn't matter because you can just pull that bread apart. So it won't be a problem. All right, so while we're here now, I'm going to just check my, my meat. Okay, so we're going to check our meat. Now, our meat just came out of the pressure cooker, so it is hot. I've got half a banana here I should eat. Today, I did not drink and I did not eat. Not a good thing. But that's what happens when you're busy and I got to hurry up because my daughter needs to work. So here's my meat. This is my newest recipe and I made this with sweet potatoes. So I don't know which one I'm going to use first. Try not to break my aluminum paper because this way I can reuse it again. Now a lot of people say, I don't know when to pull my meat apart or how to pull it apart. Well, it really is up to you. Uh, I try and do it when it's still a little warm. And don't throw away your parchment paper, guys, because you can still reuse this. Okay, I'm trying to do this without burning myself because it just came out of the... Yeah, this is maybe still too hot. Let me see if I can take a fork. And remember, guys, it doesn't have to be perfect when you're pulling apart your meat. Oh, look at the beautiful strands. A little warm to do it. You know, it doesn't have to, your meat doesn't have to be perfectly pulled. Who cares? It's got to go down the same hole, the, you know? It's got to go down the hatch. Who's going to see it? Oh, that's good. It's got so little ingredients, yet it has a really, really good taste to it. So it's still a little too hot to pull it apart, but I will pull it apart. And I am going to make sandwiches for dinner. Maybe I'll even put it through a panini press. You know, you can even cut this if you don't want to... Um, if you don't want to use it as uh, pulled meat, you could just simply make slices and put that in your sandwich. And how thin you want your sandwiches, that's really up to you. But the flavor is delicious. So you have the option to either make like a pulled meat with this. But again, I advise not to burn yourself because this is way too hot to break it apart right now. And you don't want to wait till it's too cold because then you're going to get super big chunks. But very, very good. So there you go. Another recipe if you want to give it a try. And this is done with sweet potatoes and beets. And it has a little bit of coffee just for that grounding taste. But beautiful, beautiful seitan meat. And remember, just because you have it in this shape... You can do so many things with it. Like I said, you can cut it into slices. Um, you can break it into cubes and make like shish, shish kebabs or stew meat. Or you can just break big pieces, put it through the uh, food processor and turn it into minced meat. So you could do a lot of things with your seitan. And one and a half cups goes a long ways. I have two bundles here and I'm going to have meat for the week. But for now, I'm going to wait till that bread is done. And then we're going to do something special. Mm, this is really good. And we're going to make some nice sandwiches with it. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Okay, so I'll see you in a little bit, guys.
here's my beautiful bread now I am gonna put this in the oven at so I'm gonna preheat my oven and then I'm gonna cook this bread and we're gonna do something with it so I'm gonna see you in a little bit okay so basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna treat that meat like you would if you had animal products and in this case I'm just gonna cook it up with a little bit of onion I'm using my cast iron because I find that everything tastes better in cast iron. I'm going to cook this on my stove top. And this is going to go in our sandwiches. So here's my onion. And here's just a little bit of sliced meat. Hopefully it should be enough. Otherwise we could use even some of my other shredded meat. Remember, it doesn't have to be shredded, it could be sliced, it could be any way you want to make it. Okay, that should be good because there's going to be other stuff going in the sandwich. And that's it, I'm going to put some steak spice, good old Montreal steak spice, the best steak spice you can get. A little bit of olive oil. There we go. And we're just going to get it nice and golden and then it goes in, in our sandwiches. Uh, maybe a little bit of heat, right? See what I do? I let them dry up. If I have too many, I just take some and start drying them up for when I need them. Makes life a little easier. There we go. So I'm going to cook this up, and then I'm going to show you once the bread is done and when we put the sandwiches together. Beautiful. Almost done. Remember, this meat is already cooked. All you want to do is just get it nice and golden and add some flavor or seasoning to your meat. And now that it's almost done, I'm going to add a little bit of my organic Worcestershire sauce. Beautiful. And delicious. Perfect. Done. Okay. So my meat is done. So again, this is just uh, vegan Worcestershire sauce. It's got no fish in it. It's marked right there. Gluten-free, vegan. And I'll put a link where you can get this. It might not be the same brand, but it is a vegan Worcestershire sauce. So I'll put a link. And by adding this to your meat, it only gives it that nice uh, steak taste. Don't eat it all. Mm. Mm, good, eh? Right. Okay, so I'll see you when I put my sandwiches together. We're going to make a tiny little slaw to eat on the side of our sandwich. I usually buy, like when I buy my cabbage, what I do is I have my husband shred it for me and I keep it in a bag in the fridge so when I need it, it's nice and prepared. Makes life easy, guys. And since we have cilantro in our bread, I'm going to put some cilantro in our slaw. This could be roughly chopped, it doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. I'm going to put a little maple. Got to make more sour cream. Some sour cream. There we go. I'm going to add a little mayo. Some salt. I'm 
just going to give this a quick toss and then I'm going to add some onion to this. I'm just making a little slaw just for the fun of it. Otherwise, I eat a very large, large salad all by myself. Nice creamy slaw. Just taste this. Oh my God. Restaurant quality. Sometimes the most simple things are the most delicious. Mm. Maybe I should have made more. But if you really want to taste something delicious, you got to mix sour cream with mayo. It just brings it to a different level. Because we already have onion in with our meat, we're just going to put just a little bit of red onion, mostly for color. Basically, we want that for color. Beautiful. Here we go, here's our beautiful bread. And I don't know if my daughter's gonna be able to wait. I just want you to hear that crunch on the outside. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And very simple to make. And remember, we made it with some leftover sweet potatoes. So get those, uh, get those leftovers and do something with it. Yeah, I don't know if she's gonna be able to wait, so I'm gonna crack one open. Here we go. Where's that saga? Normally I wait for the bread to cool off, but I don't think Erica can wait anymore. Can you wait, Erica? Not really. So there's our bread, nice and airy inside. And we're going to start off with a little bit of mayo. Do this the right way. Okay, we're gonna put some mushrooms on top. Wish you can smell this, guys. Well, I don't have I don't have any uh, any cheese made, but I do have some Earth Island mozzarella. We're gonna put a slice of that. There we go. Some beautiful frisée. Okay. And 
there is her dinner. I'm just going to give her some slaw. And there you go, guys. Dinner for a queen, a princess. So I hope you like this video, guys. And if you give this a try, come back. Let me know how you like it. And guess what, guys? I'm going to see you in the next video. Yeah, that crunch, crunchy crunch. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.